Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video we're going to be talking about grinder pairings with the Sage Dual Boiler. The grinder you use with your espresso machine is very important. In fact, if you speak to most people who really know the stuff where espresso is concerned, most will tell you that the grinder is more important than the espresso machine. So if you're going for the dual boiler, which grinder should you pair it with? In this video, I'm going to suggest 10 grinders in ascending price order from about £200 to just under £1,000. I think the vast majority of people watching this will be looking at something within this price range. We're also covering both flat burrs and conical for anyone who has a preference either way, and we're including conventional grinders with hoppers and single doser grinders. We're going to put the specs for each grinder on the screen so we can keep this video as short as possible. Sage or Breville Smart Grinder Pro? The Baratza Encore ESP is the cheapest in this list of grinders, but when bundled into the Dynamic Duo package that we've mentioned in earlier videos in this series, the grinder will cost you about £50 in the UK and about $100 in America. The Smart Grinder Pro has been one of the best-selling grinders for a good few years now, and its main strengths are price, durability, versatility, and ease of use. At RRP, it's £210 in the UK, about $200 in the States, and it's about €260 Euros in mainland Europe. If you're in the UK or mainland Europe, including Germany and France, see the link in the description about discount codes for Sage appliances. This grinder is an all-rounder, a jack of all trades, you might say, and it's great for making big jumps from one brew method to another and back again. As I've said in other videos, I think the Sage Smart Grinder Pro is fine to start with, and given the Dynamic Duo bundle is such a great deal, it makes sense to start out with this grinder and then upgrade when you feel the need. It's a very user-friendly grinder and it's fairly quiet, it'll grind plenty fine enough for espresso blends and most medium to dark roasts. The grinds can get a bit clumpy at the finest settings, but it's nothing that a WDT tool won't sort out. Baratza Encore ESP. This is about £180 in the UK, about $200 in the States, and it's the new espresso-specific version of the well-known Baratza Encore. This has 20 micro adjustments and 20 macro, but this isn't micro plus macro settings that work in combination as with the other Baratza grinders. It's separate micro adjustments for espresso and macro for brew. It has a portafilter dosing cup which fits both 58mm and 54mm portafilters thanks to this clever gasket adapter. It has a simple on and off switch plus an on-demand button. It's not too loud, a bit louder than the Smart Grinder Pro, it'll grind about the same fineness as the Smart Grinder Pro, and it's a bit clumpy on the finer side of things as with the Smart Grinder Pro, but again, you can break up the clumps with a WDT tool. So that's the two cheaper options. I will do another video blind taste testing these two grinders with the dual boiler, by the way, but I'm keeping this video to an overview of each, as I don't think you want to sit and watch me for an hour. Basically, these two grinders, in my humble opinion, will get you started with the dual boiler. It makes sense to me if you're going to use either of these to use a Smart Grinder Pro by buying the Dynamic Duo package. But if you already have the dual boiler and you need to buy a grinder, I think you'll probably find the Smart Grinder Pro a bit more user friendly and slightly quieter. But I suspect that when we do the direct comparison video, we'll find that the results in the cup are almost the same. We have a full review coming out soon for this machine. Click the subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when that gets released. Next, the Eureka Mignon Speciality. This is about £400 in the UK, about $700 in the States. This is a flat burr grinder, and it's worth mentioning that there's a debate among espresso enthusiasts regarding whether conical or flat burrs are best. I think you probably have to have a very well-trained palette to be able to detect the difference between flat burrs versus conical, but among those who appear to, it does appear to be a personal preference. With the dual boiler, I've had great espresso with both conical and flat burrs, so I don't personally have a preference one way or the other. This is a very capable little grinder. I've never come across a bean it doesn't have the power to grind. I think when it comes to sub £500 grinders in the UK, this is hard to beat. Spending a couple of hundred quid more on this grinder will give you improved potential shock quality over the Smart Grinder Pro and the Encore ESP. It gives you more grinding power, so the ability to use a wider range of beans. It gives you better fine-tuning adjustment for dialing in, and I've had really good results with this grinder with various different machines, including the dual boiler. Eureka Mignon Zero. This is a single doser version of the Speciality, so most of the features are the same, but it doesn't have programmable doses, and it has a short hopper with bellows. It's roughly the same price as a Speciality, it's roughly the same grinder as a Speciality, it's literally just that it's made for single dosing. So it's just on and off, as with the Niche Zero, and it's made to be low retention. It's not on an incline as the Niche Zero is, and basically their method for making it lower retention is just to put bellows on it, which you can do on any grinder. 
They work to a certain degree, but you have to be fairly heavy-handed with the bellows. Solo DF64. Another single doser grinder with low retention at under a gram. This grinder has turned a lot of heads as it appears to give the Niche Zero a run for its money, at least where cup quality is concerned. It's about £400 in the UK with the standard burrs, about £350 at present in the US, although that looks like a limited offer. I will do a proper side-by-side -side comparison with the Niche Zero in the future, so subscribe and allow notifications to see that when it's published. Baratza Sete 270. These are about £420 in the UK, about $400 in the States. The Set 8 grinders are very popular, particularly in America, and overall I think they're a great grinder, quite a popular pairing for the dual boiler. And my only negative comment about the Set 8 is the noise. I'm a drummer, I spent a long time as a kid doing gigs without earplugs in because I was stupid and thought my hearing was invincible, and as a result my hearing isn't great, so the fact that I think this is loud is saying something. Turn that grinder off. Coffee. I'd say they're the loudest grinders I've used, but when it comes to performance and general user experience, I really like them. I particularly like the macro and micro grind adjustment, as this gives you really precise grind adjustment and makes it slightly easier when it comes to dialing in a bean you've used before. Eureka Oro Mignon. So the Mignon Zero I mentioned earlier is a single doser version of the Mignon Speciality, and the Mignon Oro is a single doser version of the Eureka Mignon XL. It's about £450 in the UK, depending on where you buy it, and it's about $800 in the States. It has 65mm diamond inside, flat burrs, and it's on an incline, so they're clearly trying to create the close to zero retention in a similar way that Niche do it, rather than with bellows. You can get them with or without bellows. I think the UK versions are coming without the bellows as standard now, just very short short hoppers, but the retention does appear to be very low, even without bellows, around half a gram. Niche Zero. This is the first purpose-built single doser grinder made to be close to zero retention, and it's still £500 in the UK, about $600, the same as it was when it was first released. I think the fact that other brands are still trying to compete with this grinder a few years after it was released is testament to what a great job Niche did with this grinder. The main things to say about it that I don't think any other brand have found a way to compete with yet is that it achieves very close to zero retention without bellows and it's very kitchen friendly. I've been using this as my main home grinder with my dual boiler at home for a good while now and I don't really have anything bad to say about it. It's not just about the looks and the zero retention side of things, it's a very capable grinder with very good quality burrs. Baratza Sete 270 WI so this is a Set 8 270 with built-in Akaya scales. They're about £620 in the UK, $600 in the States, so you're paying a couple of hundred quid for the inbuilt scales. It's a great feature to have to be able to simply set the dose weight, and it's pretty accurate too from testing I've done, but it does come at quite a cost given the difference in price from the 270. Comment below if you think it's worth it, or if you've got one, let me know what you think of it. Finally, we have the Barazza Forte. This is about £920 in the UK, about $850 in America. In the States, the AP version is what you'll want for use with a dual boiler. In the UK, it comes as one version with both burr sets. It was made as a commercial grinder. It's not cheap, but it is a very capable grinder, and I've heard from a couple of people in the know that this is one of the very best grinder pairings for the dual boiler. It's hard to understand how it would be worth nearly double the price of the Niche Zero, for example, but we will put that to the test with blind taste testing in a future video. If you want to check our full review on the Baratza Forte, then click this magical box above my head. So there you go, that's my list of the 10 most obvious grinder pairings for the Sage or Breville dual boiler. An ostrich's eye is bigger than an ostrich. Wait, is that right? Anyway, that has nothing to do with clicking the like button, but click Game the like over, button man. if you've never seen an ostrich flying. Thank you very much for watching, and if you love coffee and enjoyed this video, we've got tons of content about how to make better coffee at home to take you from beginner to home barista. We've got reviews and how-tos on the most popular machines. If you like the sound of that, click on my face to subscribe. Tatty bye!